Frida, the guardian angel of wounded artists. Now I paint every day. I make pictures of myself in bed in the cast. I make the cast look different in each picture. I am an Egyptian mummy in one picture. In another picture, I give myself a fishtail like a mermaid. I make a picture where mommy stands next to me with the bedpan. I make a picture of Izzy eating chocolate chip cookies as the tears pour down my face. I make a picture of Poppy gathering me in his arms after the accident, my broken leg dangling, and the Oldsmobile bursting into flames behind us. There's a picture of Baba sitting next to my bed and singing to me, and I am smiling. I even make a picture of Zid holding up a bottle of prune juice as if it were a trophy. Ever since that day, I drink a little prune juice every morning. And Zaid was right. It tastes pretty good once you get used to it. I make a picture of Joy to welcome her back when summer vacation is over. I paint her in her bell-bottom pants and puffy sleeves, puffy sleeved blouse with a halo of flowers and a pink peace sign in her hands. Thank you, Ruthie. Thank you, she exclaims. That is the most beautiful portrait anyone has ever made of me. I'm glad you like it, Joy. It's yours to keep. I will treasure it, Ruthie. Again, I feel so thankful to have Joy as my teacher, but then I can't help it. I suddenly feel like I want to cry. You are the best teacher in the world, but Joy, I, I don't know. What's the matter, Ruthie? It's a whole new school year, and I'm, I miss going to school. I miss not being with the other kids. How will I ever catch up with everyone? Oh, sweetheart, I know it's difficult being out of school, but believe me, you will be fine one day, and then you will go back to being a regular kid. But I've forgotten how to be a regular kid. I don't know what it's like to be free, to be able to walk to school and play outside. I'm like a turtle now, stuck in its shell. Don't you worry, Joy says. A leg doesn't stay broken forever. Everything will come naturally as soon as you are healed. I hope that is true, I tell Joy. I wish I were as brave as my grandmother, my papa. She had to leave everything behind and took a ship and crossed the ocean all by herself. Baba landed in Cuba and met my grandfather, my Zed, and worked to bring the whole family to Cuba before Hitler could hurt them. Isn't that amazing? Yes, Ruthie, very amazing. Your grandmother would have gotten along well with Emma Lazarus. She was also a brave woman. Who's she? She's a writer and a poet. She wrote a poem that is engraved on the Statue of Liberty that says, Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Joy tells me that Emma Lazarus came from a Jewish, Jewish family, and that her ancestors were immigrants from many places, and they too lost countries more than once, like in my family. Maybe because her family moved around so much, Emma Lazarus fought for the rights of immigrants. She also fought for religious freedom, even though she herself wasn't religious. She felt God was in the earth we stand upon, in the trees that give us shade, and the goodness in our hearts. So Joy... It's okay that even though I'm Jewish, I sometimes pray to other gods, I ask her. That's all right, Ruthie. We have freedom of belief here in America, and freedom of expression, too. I know. My father is always saying this is a glorious country because it's free. And we have to keep working to make sure it's free for everyone. But freedom can mean many different things. That's your homework. I want you to think about what freedom means to you, Ruthie. And then, in our next class, we'll have a debate so you can consider all the arguments and why they are significant. I love how Joy talks to me like I'm a grown-up. It's overwhelming sometimes, but she makes me think about important things I would never think about. And then I don't feel so bad that I'm stuck in bed and can't go to school like all the regular kids. Chico makes me think big, too. Interesting thoughts, too. Every night after work, he visits me and looks at the pictures I've painted. This is good. And this is good, too. And this one, how beautiful. Chico, aren't are there any pictures you don't like? What can I do? I adore them all, he says. You remind me of a great Mexican artist. Like you, she was in bed a long time and couldn't walk. She was in pain always, but she didn't become her pain. She still made pictures. Her name was Frida Kahlo. She show, he shows me some pictures in a Mexican magazine. Frida Kahlo has thick black eyebrows and eyes that can see into your heart. Frida turned herself into the subject of her paintings. She made self-portraits. 
One picture shows a column running from Frida's chin down to her waist. The column is broken and sits in a river of blood. She has white straps encircling her belly and binding her above and below her chest. That's the tape that holds her together and keeps her from falling to pieces. Frida broke her back in a bu bus accident, Chico explains. Before that, she had polio. Her right leg was shorter than her left. She wore long skirts to cover her legs. Eventually, they had to amputate her right leg. Amputate? What does that mean, Chico? The leg became infected. The doctors had to cut it off to save her life. I can't help gasping when he says that. I tell Chico, I hope the doctor won't have to cut off my leg. Chico reassures me, don't worry, mi cielo, you'll be fine. Frida lived in Mexico a long time ago. We are in America. Medicine is very advanced here. I know he says that to make me feel better, but I might grow up to be like Frida, one leg shorter than the other. Maybe I'll lose my leg too, and I'll wear long skirts, but I'll keep making pictures. Will that make me happy? Suddenly, I change my mind about wanting to be like Frida. I push away the pile of paintings I've just shown to Chico. What's wrong? Chico asks. Chico, I want to be an artist, but I also want to be a normal girl. I want to run around and play and go to the bathroom by myself. I know, mi cielo, don't despair. I mas tiempo que vida. What does that mean, there's more time than life? I don't get it. You have to be patient. Your time will come. Meanwhile, keep making pictures. Frida is gazing at you from the sky, and she's happy you're drawing in bed, just like she used to do. She wants you to get well. She knows you are resilient, too. Whenever you feel sad, remember you're not alone. Frida is there to help you. Frida is the guardian angel of all wounded artists, and she'll always be with you. Dear Frida, you are a very special guardian angel to me. I am grateful to you for showing the world you can be a great artist even when you can't get out of bed. Please make me well, heal my legs, and I promise I'll keep painting forever. And if you can't heal me, I'll still keep painting forever. I really love painting. But try to heal me, okay, Frida? Not just for my sake, but so my pretty mommy can go out and stroll around in her high heels and be admired by everybody. Thank you, Ruthie.